America's Voice. We are Fearless LA. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. We hope that this message encourages you and brings you hope in whatever season you're in right now. Enjoy. Who's excited to be here? Let me, let me hear some. what chapter you find yourself on today you're on a journey in a time frame where God's promises will come to pass somebody needs to hear just that today if you get nothing else God's promises are coming to pass God's promises will come to pass in your life well hello hello welcome come on to another Sunday online church for Fearless LA. This is my husband, Jeremy, and I'm Christy Johnson, and we are the lead pastors of this church, and we are glad to be the pastors. We love our Amazing. church, and so we are glad that you tuned into this special Sunday. Uh, we have, um, usually one of us speaks, but we decided to have one of our own um, part of our team, one of our pastors, David Turner. Come on, he Dave. He's going to bring an incredible word to you that is going to encourage your heart. And it's from the book of Job. And so we're going we're to want you to The only thing I wish he would have done is shave his head on stage. So he could really depict what yeah, happened Job with Job when, not, when he David, shaved what an head. awesome message. What a great message. It was a great message. And so just don't don't tune out of this stage. Stay Come tuned on, in. Don't be whole, a one minute streamer. That's right. Not a three minute streamer. Come on. Whole time. Whole time. No one minute streamers here. And we also have something brand new called Fearless Essentials Box. Yep. And it just basically gives you tons of fearless gear um, from the hats, so the latest good. hats that we, we designed. The latest hat. I, I didn't design it. it, but the shirts, I got a shirt on one of the shirts. And I mean, there's so many things in this that box. That shirt's not in the box, by the way. That's an old shirt. I just want to show that it's, cool stuff you know what yeah, I'm saying yeah it's cool yes and uh yeah yeah as you so they'll tell you the cost everything you need to know just text that keyword below to that phone number and you can get a box for yourself or your family members or somebody that just needs a little pick me up pick me up a quarantine there you go Perfect. hey and speaking of quarantine pick me up psalms 9 verse number one says i will praise you O lord with all of my heart I will tell of your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High God. Come on, praise is a weapon. It's something that we use. It's powerful. And then it says, because of that praise, my enemies will turn back. They will stumble and perish before you. You have upheld my right cause and you've set your th on your throne judging righteously. So God's not up from the throne. He's sitting on his throne judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name and uh, forever. Name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemy. Wow. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He established his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness. He will govern the people with justice. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And read this last one. Those who know your name will trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Come on. So here we go. We're going to seek the Lord today through this stream. And we know that through this, the Lord will never yeah. forsake us. Let's go right into this service. Are you ready? Hello, Fearless! Are you guys ready to worship with us today? Let's go! How my heart is moved The way you carry me
Thank you so much for tuning in to Fearless Online. Hey, if you're new, if this is your first time joining us, we would love to say hey and welcome you to the Fearless family. So be sure to text the keyword Fearless to our Fearless number. Church, we are gonna dive right into service. So get your notes out, grab a coffee and a friend, and let's go. Well, this first clip is from David Turner, and he just starts to go through the book of Job and kind of the events of his life. And it falls through in this chapter where he goes through a lot of losses, things being taken from him. And in fact, the Lord allows that to happen. Yeah. And he's in this almost in between. And, and he begins to talk through that, that phase of what happens when you are in between. You see waiting. a promise, yeah. you see a vision, but yet you are a man or woman in the waiting. Take a look at what he talks about. Well, I've titled my message, message What Chapter Are You On? And I wanna talk a little bit about today What do we do in the waiting of life? I heard someone say the other day, and it was an interesting way of putting it, we're all always going through something, but pretty much never, maybe rarely, are we going through all the same thing. And I think this has been a season where we could probably attest that, man, in most times of life, everybody you you encounter is always going through something, but it's always very different things. And even though we all are going through different things in this season, there are so many similarities that we are all going through in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of everything happening in our world, it feels like every single day. You just go on Instagram and you hear one more thing that's just mind-blowing, yet at the same time, it doesn't even phase us in this moment because you're just like, I don't even know what to take in anymore. I don't even know what to believe. And I want us today to, to look far beyond what, what our world is talking about. Just for a moment, I want us to look inward of what chapter are you on in the middle of this season that we're finding ourselves in. And I don't know about you, but is there anybody patient? Let me see some patient people. It's okay. I want to see a couple hands. Shelby seems patient, right? Kevin, I think you're patient. Is there anybody else who's like, I'm pretty patient? This car, I appreciate that. Is that Cam? Is that Cam? Cam's patient for sure. Michaela, your hand's not up. I appreciate that. Cam is patient. Let me see one more hand. You're like, look, I'm patient. Who do we got here? Chris? No, Hans. Hans is patient. I mean, these are the people that are patient. Now, can I see some hands for people who are like, look, I got some amazing gifts. Here's my Enneagram number, but I am not patient. Most of us, if not almost all of us, besides the angels that were Hans and a few others, and I believe that. Today, I want us to talk on this, this, this thought of how do we continue to trust in the promises that God has given us, not just in the beginning, but in the middle when we don't see them. I'm not very patient. In some ways, some I guess you could say litmus test to our patients that I like to ask myself is maybe a grocery store line. The other day I'm in Ralph's. I live by Ralph's, so I go there every day. I'm not the guy who goes and does all his grocery shopping. I'm the procrastinator who goes almost every single day to get what I need. Anybody? Or just me? Just me. Cool. I go to Ralph's and I'm, I'm in line and my line's not moving and this line's moving. And if you're smart, you know, you wait it out. If you're not really, I shouldn't say smart, but if you're impatient, if you're anything like me, I I jumped in the other line. Come to find out the guy's card wasn't working. I'm like 10 minutes deep. And then the line that I was in, you know what happens, right? You guys have been here before. What happens? The line, just 30 people went through that line. I go back to my line. True story. I go back to my line, 10 people back. The second I get in line, that dude's card worked and that line went. Then I went to self-checkout and they closed the self-checkout. Here I am like 20 minutes at Ralph's. It should have been like three minutes, true story. And I get back in line and one of the people working there was like, you're having a tough time, huh? I'm like, yeah, I'm really having a tough time. I'm just, my impatience led me to do things that I would have never done because I thought I had a better timing than the situation that was at hand. But if I would have just taken a moment and said, I know this line will move. And that's just a practical example of Ralph's. How about the person who's always creeping at a stoplight? You know those people, it's red completely red and they just start kind of creeping anybody Carlos where you at he's back here I know he does that I know he does that I've been in his car he's like creeping into the middle of the intersection I'm like bro we are gonna die because of your impatience you keep creeping and then what do you do people creep next to you it's just it's awkward like everyone's moving but it's not green and then eventually it's green how about the people when you get to a restaurant I'm just trying to give some perspective for those of you that are saying man I'm pretty patient maybe these are connecting with you and the second you sit down, there's that one guy who's like, we're ready, we're ready. And everyone's like, oh, we're not ready. I'm not, 
I haven't even barely sat down. My right cheek is on, my left cheek isn't. Like, I'm not even really sitting in the booth yet. We're ready. I'm going to get this. And then he's like, whoever's next, and nobody knows. Today I want us to talk about this topic. Not that I'm a pro on being patient, but I am understanding in this season that if we can't understand that we have to be patient on the promises of God, we will give up in the middle. I want to talk about one of my favorite people in the Bible. I'd have to say second favorite. First is Jesus. It's a given. It's just there's no choice there. My second favorite person in the Bible is not David and Goliath, even though it's scientifically proven that is the most powerful name, is David. It's not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even though they went into the fire, they came out. I mean, it's such a dope story. Young boys didn't even smell like smoke. Like, those kids, those kids are pretty tight. One of my favorite people in the Bible that I constantly reflect back on his story is the story of Job. Because I feel like I don't really need a whole lot of encouragement to find joy when life is good. I feel like I don't really need a whole lot of teaching necessarily when life is good to continue to just live the Christian calling, the purpose that God has placed on my life. But if you're anything like me, the second anything goes wrong is when I say, man, I need Jesus more than ever before. Is the second when I begin to just say, man, is God even with me in this? And I begin to even look internally and find frustrations at times when God promised me this, but it hasn't happened. But it's not that it won't happen, it just hasn't happened yet. I think sometimes we have a time frame that we put God on and all along he's saying, oh, it's going to happen, but just maybe not then. You will get healed, but just maybe not quite yet. You will get that job, but just maybe not yet. You will have those kids. You will get married. Your business is going to take off as I promised, but maybe it's in a different time frame than you're imagining. Maybe, maybe just some lights or show of hands. You ever just gotten frustrated because it didn't happen when you thought it would? But nobody told you this is when it would happen. You just assumed Man, it's going to happen because I did this for God. You ever do something for God and you're serving Him, but then all of a sudden your, your, your motives changed? Of I did it for God, but now I'm kind of believing for this. And we get a little bit manipulative in our relationship with God. I want to jump into the story of Job because when I read the Bible, there's probably not one more story that I can relate more to in my life in moments of pain. Yet Job was not only able to face pain, but he was able to overcome it. And I want to read about that today if you're ready. Job 1 through 2, I'm going to read some scripture, some Bible. I hope during this season, I know a lot of you are doing some sort of great workout routine and you got that eating plan and I see you guys on Instagram, you're starting a business and you're doing, you know, whatever sales thing. I'm all for whatever you want to do, but at the same time, this has to become foundational in this season. The, The word of God, and I say this from experience, life can be busy. We can find our excuses, but there is no excuse not to be in the word of God in these moments. When your job is shut down and you have nothing to do and you go maybe straight to video games, you maybe go straight to just hours of Netflix. Look, I love Netflix. I'm a documentary, like, that's my thing. I watch every documentary there is. I got some good recommendations if you want to talk to me after. But I'm telling you, the Word of God has been drastically changing my life in this season on a daily basis. And I I say that from someone who used to just kind of read and Read a chapter and say, you know, I did it, but now every day I'm hungry. You're hungry for what your appetite longs for. So I just want to put that in there today. I'm telling you, let's not come out of this quarantine still with the excuse of, I just haven't had time. No, no, we all have more time. And I know I don't even have kids. I know some of you have kids, but I'm sure at some point there's been a little bit more time in your life. I would guess if if I'm not a parent, I don't know that. I'm sorry, but let's be in our word together. Amen? Amen. Why don't you guys just go ahead and lift your hands with us wherever you are. Father, we worship you today.
Fearless, come on. What an amazing time it is right now in the stream. Don't go anywhere right now because this is actually your opportunity to give back. God has been giving us so many things through this message that's coming and all the stuff that we're receiving as we are consuming this amazing word, this amazing service. But right now is actually your opportunity to partner with God through your giving. Man, at Fearless, we love to give and we love to give first. We love to take when we receive, to take what we receive and not go spend it on things that we need or we want 
but to take first and say, God, we trust you with the first of all of our increase. In the Bible, they called it first fruits. Uh, you know, that doesn't make as much sense now because none of us are farmers, or maybe some of you are, but most of us are not farmers. When we receive, we don't receive fruit, but in their time, the thing that they had worked for was not a green dollar bill or a cash app. It, it was a fruit. They, they worked with the sweat of their brow to see a harvest in their family for their life, then to sell that fruit off and trade it. And so what they would do to just show God, we so trust you, is instead of eating and tasting the first fruit, they would give it to the Lord. It's saying, God, even though we only have this first, we trust you with the rest of the seeds. How powerful is that? I love this in the book of Malachi, the last uh, book of the Bible before the New Testament in order. In chapter three, one of my favorite moments where God kind of um, lets them know he wants to bless them. He wants to pour out. I don't know if you've ever felt like, man, everybody else gets blessed but me. What, what, when is it gonna be my turn? And God gives a promise right here that blessing will overtake you if you do this principle. Look at this, Math, Malachi chapter three, uh, verse number seven, the second part of it says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord. But you ask, how are we, to, how are we supposed to return? Is it gonna be like, what, what are we gonna do? And then God begins to give this. He, he says, will a man rob God? Yet you rob me in tithes and offerings. Notice that there are two things that God says we're robbing him in is tithes and offerings. Now, let me, let me pause for a second because um, how can we rob someone that has everything and is in infinite? And, and I think the robbing is not that you're stealing the money that you're not giving. The robbing is that you're stealing the good father from blessing you the way he wants to bless you because his blessing in this is contingent upon his law that is here. He says, look, if you would just give, you would free me up to give to you. you are, we are robbing God, not from the money we don't give, but from the blessing that we withhold in his hands that he wanted to pour out on us. So good, I love that. But you ask God, how, how are we robbing God? In tithes and offerings, tithes 10% of all your increase. So it's easy, it's a math equation. And then offerings above and beyond uh, wh what that 10% is. So you give that 10% and then boom, now you become a person that gives offerings. Offerings are decided not by a math equation, but through prayer, through asking the Holy Spirit, what would you want me to give? And as the Holy Spirit so impresses on your heart, you give that and you can trust Him when you begin to give like that. You, He says, because you've robbed me of these two things, you're under a curse. Look, I don't want you to be under a curse. God didn't put you under a curse, but because we live on a fallen world, the fallen world is cursed. But what removes the curse is when we begin to put our kingdom uh, the heavenly kingdom as our first citizenship. We, 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 in a sense, pay homage to their first before we take care of here. And, and he says, you are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. In other words, people were bringing part of the tithe or some of the tithe or once a month they would give a tithe. Bring the whole thing, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this. I love this. The only place God tells us, test me. Come on, come at me. Try me on this. Test me. God is like daring us. Test me in this, says the Lord God Almighty, and, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pest from devouring your crops. Who's tired of pest? devouring your crops, your finances, and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit. In, in other words, they will not uh, bear fruit and it fall off early, says the Lord God Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed and yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord God Almighty. Wow, come on folks. Today is a good day to live out this principle. Stop robbing God. You, you and I, we rob God all the time. Not of what we withhold from Him, 
But what if what he has to withhold from us because we're being that kid that is not paying attention to what God's asking from us. Come on, let's give our whole tithe and then let's give an offering above and beyond that. Come on, if you're giving today, I wanna to pray over you. Lord, I pray over everyone who is giving today, who is putting you first, who is giving a, a tithe and Lord, even saying, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to give as an offering today? And Lord, as we give, God bless the rest. Okay, God, open up the windows of heaven. Okay, God, we're testing you in this. Thank you, Jesus, for this gift as we give. Amen. Many of us have dreams and promises and we're just in the waiting and we are uh, sometimes frustrated, we're disappointed, but then we're still there's something, the yeah, yeah. and it could be some of you months or some of you have been in waiting for years, but David Turner just begins to unpack this a little bit and kind of the position we should take in our spirit of expectation and faith. We need to start to protect and keep as we are in the waiting because if we continue to worship, have faith, yeah. there's something on the other side of that. And he has three friends join him. And they sit and they mourn with him. They cry with him for, I believe, seven days. Chapters 1 and 2 of Job, everything wrong happens. Chapters 3 through 39, it's a waiting period. He's just sitting there awaiting. He's lost his family. He's lost his wealth. He's sitting there sick. He has boils all over his body, waiting. And it's a dark season in this book. I encourage you, go read the story of Job. Don't just read about how he gets double, which we'll get to in a moment. Well, God's going to give me double. Yeah, not only about the double should we be concerned with what do we do in the waiting because if in the waiting we respond in a way that we shouldn't, we may never see the double and we'll just see what God did or allowed to happen. And then we allow frustration and bitterness and hurt. People are so easily hurt because they only see what God allowed to happen, yet they never waited out to see the promise that was in the process of what they went through. Well, God allowed this to happen. Yeah, but what is he going to do with your story? I don't know because I left church. I'll never know because I got offended. No, no, no. What if we say, God, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm going to trust you in the middle, God. I'm not going to quit now. If you promise me this, I'm waiting on it. If you promise me healing and I'm sick, it's still coming. If you promise me blessing yet I'm still in lack, I'm going to continue to give. And here we have Job who mourns for seven days. And it gets dark. It's almost so dark I can't even read it on this stage. He, he just gets crazy with it. I wish my parents on the night that they conceived me would have never even been together. I, I wish I was dead. I wish, you ever just said some things that if people heard it, like you may sound a little crazy? You ever just been honest with God and, and kind of just been a little bit real with God in the way that you're real with your friends or you vent to a roommate? Man, I encourage you, if you haven't done that, take those same thoughts, those same frustrations to the heart of God because they may not be able to handle it, but he always can. And it gets dark, 38 chapters of him sitting there with boils on his skin, nothing left, a shaved head, miserable, going over and over again. I wish I was never, I wish I never came into this dark world. I wish I would have never even been given birth on the, the, that dark day, wanting to be taken from earth. And we know that in the end, Jesus comes back into the situation and Job receives double of every single thing that he had, exactly double. Double the family, double the blessings, double the donkeys, double all of it. And I think often that's the perspective that's focused on from the story of Job. Yeah, even if something happens, God's going to give you double, and I do believe that. Those of you that have, have had things taken from your life, peace taken from your life, God's going to give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Those of you that have, have had your, your business taken from you in this season, God's going to give you double as you're faithful to him. I believe all of that, but my, my point today is not in the fact that God wants to give you double of what's lost. My point and my question for you is what chapter are you on? Are you on chapter 1 where you're still walking through a bit of hell, if you were to be honest? Are you on chapter 24 when you've already gone through some painful situations and God is silent? God doesn't respond to them in those 38 chapters until he gets to the end and he blesses him for remaining faithful even though he was frustrated. You can be faithful and frustrated at the same time as long as you voice it to God. 
We don't have to be fake with God and real with others. Let's switch that around. And the people that don't care about us, if we're going to be fake to anybody, let's be fake to them and real with God. Let's not be fake to the people in church and real to coworkers who really don't care about us. What if we could begin to bring that same trust that we have for others that really just are comforting our, our, our wounds, are beginning to just say whatever we want to hear? And what if we could bring those conversations to the heart of God? Yes, God gave Job double of everything he lost. But I want you to genuinely think, what chapter am I on today? You're on chapter 36 and you're so close but you just don't know. I mean, Job was sitting in ashes, mourning with his friends. I mean, I've never cried seven days straight with three other guys. That's almost impressive. Seven days straight of just mourning and crying. But I can relate to that pain. I can relate to the moments where I feel like God isn't even there, like he doesn't even care. I've had moments where I'm just like, God, do you even hear me? I've had seasons in my life where I'm like, God, if you cared, you would have. If you love me, you would be here. If you blank, and I begin to put God in this box of my timing and what I want and when I want it. But what chapter are you on? Imagine quitting in chapter 36 and never receiving the promises of God and walking out from that situation. And yeah, of course you see God as a twisted figure who never really loved you because maybe you just didn't see the promise on the other side of the process. God sees you where you're at, and no matter what chapter you find yourself on today, you're on a journey in a time frame where God's promises will come to pass. Somebody needs to hear just that today. If you get nothing else, God's promises are coming to pass. God's promises will come to pass in your life. That promise for a business, for a partner, for, for breakthrough, freedom from addiction, freedom from anxiety, freedom from lust. God has promised you those things, but his promises often come in a process. And where do you find yourself in that process today? I think almost so many times in our walk with God, we find ourselves in a position where it's up to God. It's up to God. It's, this is a season where I feel like there's actually a lot that's up to us. And of course, God is in control. God is all sovereign. God is king. God is Lord. Don't twist me on this, but I do think there's some responsibility that we play as believers of how are we responding to these moments. Are you louder on your Instagram about politics than you are about a savior? Are we louder about the things of this world and debating and opinions and going back and forth than we are and being in the word of God? This stuff was promised. All of these things we're walking through were promised. We shouldn't be caught off guard by them. I know it's crazy times. I know I feel like every day I wake up, there's something newer and bigger and crazier and scarier. But what is our foundation being built upon? I don't want to come out of this season and be a pro in politics and know every single conspiracy theory there is and have different opinions about different topics, yet not know the word of God. I don't want my foundation in my family, in my life, to be built upon opinions. I want it to be built upon the word of God, the promises of God, the fact that God is here. God is with me. Amen. Amen. I want to pray for everyone here today with that question, what chapter are you on? I think we're all in different chapters. Some of you are on chapter 42, where you just received double of everything. I've been hearing God doing incredible things in the people's lives of our church. Man, God just blessed me with a new job where I'm making double. Somebody I know just got a free car. Like some people are in chapter 42, but don't forget some people are in chapter 26, where they're going through the worst time of their life and they see no light at the end of the tunnel. When they pray, often it feels silent, not because God's mad, but because he's testing their patience in the process. If we could all close our eyes out in this parking lot in our beautiful city, nobody looking around, just right where you're at, I want you to think on that question. What chapter are you on? Think about that. What chapter do you find yourself in? Maybe you're in chapter one where you feel like life is still falling apart. Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for the journey that you have us on. We thank you for the story of Job, God, that can encourage us in these moments, not just to look at the end prize and work for that, but to look at the middle and to see the actions of Job. Naked I came in, naked I will go. God, I pray that we can begin to live a life on a daily basis of saying, God, renew my foundation. My foundation was built upon lies. My foundation is built upon beliefs that weren't true. God, we want to place a foundation in our life on Scripture, on the Word of God, the promises of God. Give us a new faith, God, to see not only what you've promised, but to believe in it, not just for others, but for ourselves. 
God, we honor you today out here in this parking lot. We thank you, Jesus. I pray for a new faith, God, to rise up in us. God, a faith that says, God said it, it's going to happen. Scripture said it, I'm just in the waiting. God, a faith that says, God, I know it's coming. I'm getting ready. I'm being expectant. God is the, the prodigal son. The father didn't chase him. He just waited expectant. God, I pray we would have that same expectancy for the promises that God has given us for our lives, our families, our health. God, in everything else, Jesus, we thank you today. With nobody looking around, we want to pray one more prayer. All eyes closed. Today, if you're out here in this parking lot and you're saying, man, I, I need the life that Jesus has for me. Our pastor says it best. God doesn't come to make bad people good. We're trying to be good people, but it's, it's tough. He comes to bring dead people to life. And with all eyes closed, every leader, every person in here, if you're in your car and you're saying, man, I, I feel dead on the inside. You know, you know what that feels like. You know if that's you, if it's just all oh, that, that weight in your stomach. I feel like if today was my last day on earth, I don't know where I would go after this, especially in this season. It's confused me even more daily, not knowing what to believe, not knowing what to trust. If there is one thing you can trust throughout this life and possibly the only thing, it's the word of God. And if you're in this parking lot and you're saying, I feel dead on the inside and I need the life that God has for me, if you would just shine your lights. Nobody else is looking around. I want you to shine your lights today. You're saying, man, I feel dead on the inside and I want to receive that life. Don't leave today without that promise that God has for you, without the greatest gift you will ever receive. If that's you, if you would just flash the lights in your car or you can raise your hand. We're going to say a prayer. After that, we're going to celebrate with you and then we want to connect with you as well. Repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I ask you to come into my life and forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for what I did when I was spiritually dead and didn't know you. Come into my life and become my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody shouts and honks and gives a celebration. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Come on. America's Voice. We are Fearless LA. Thank you so much for watching. We hope this message encouraged you. Happy Sunday.